So today we're gonna be looking at what makes a good texture. Feel free to download this free project file to follow along. This new update focuses on stylized materials. The pack is now on sale to celebrate this new update and will continue through the Blender Market Sale for 25% off. So if you'd like to learn more, check it out in the description below. Now I have some free sample packs and things that if you download will actually give you some of the starter materials that you can use in this, including a plastic material as part of one of them and some grunge maps as well. With that being said, let's get started. Now this is a tutorial about how to create believable textures using materials and things. If you're looking for how to break down a material, I already have a long video on that. And if you're looking for specifically a texture painting tutorial, I have some on that as well. But today we're gonna be talking about how to take these materials and texture painting tools and create a believable texture. Now you can download plenty of materials that look great and then you can slap them on your model but what will really help sell that texture or material is how it interacts with your model and how it tells a story based off your model. One major signifier of this is the wear and tear of your material and how that interacts with your object. Things like roughness variations and variations in the diffuse color map as well. Now looking at a couple examples from my own artwork, you can see here with my short film Watermelon Girl character that where her arms are has actually rubbed the paint off of the puppet model. You can see here on my robot character that there's actually more dirt and grime at the bottom of the character where it would be kicking dirt back up onto itself. And here on my backpacking character with a more stylized example, you can see that I've kind of painted in these grunge marks all around to signify that this little Boy Scout type character might have adventured in the wild and injured themselves. And here at this game system, you can see a name has been scribbled on it, almost as if they're scared their toy will be stolen. Now, there are a lot of ways to convey these story or general usage and things in your textures, but one simple way is always kind of adding uh, grunge and roughness wear and tear around things like these cracks and crevices and other common areas of interaction where a user might use it. For example, maybe a bunch of fingerprints up top here. Now, some softwares have a lot of tools to do this automatically for you, including things like Substance Painter. And Blender actually has it on their roadmap to start adding some of these kind of generative features into the shader editor. And I'm really excited to share those with you. But for now, let's look at some solutions we can use with the current existing tool sets in Blender. So we're actually going to start by using a vertex tool, and then we're going to go ahead and make some alterations over here in our object. Now, if you download this project file, I've created a very basic plastic shader set up that you can follow along with. What we're gonna do first is we're going to grab our object here, and we're going to tab over into vertex mode, and we're gonna come down here to our vertex panel as well. We're gonna twirl these up here and we're going to lower our color attributes. If you have anything there, go ahead, delete it so that we can start fresh. And we'll tab into vertex paint mode. And then up here, we're going to come to this tool set here and we're going to click dirty vertex colors. Now what this is going to do is it's going to begin adding dirt to these crevices and other things based on our inputs here. Now we're going to take this method, which I'm sure you've seen before, but we're gonna add a few things to help add a bit of realism. So first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this to 90 degrees. And what that's going to do is reduce the kind of amount of coverage it has based on the curvature. And you can see here now that this dirt is only appearing around these cracks and crevices. Great, so we can actually run this again on top of itself. So let's do that. We're gonna go ahead, run that again and it may take a second to load and you can see how it just got a little thicker. But what we wanna do is actually expand out the edges a bit. So if we take our blur iterations here, I'm gonna go ahead and put a high number like 10 and it may lag for a second depending on your machine. And you can see here now that we're getting a nice even spread. Perfect, let's go ahead over here to our color and we're going to name this grime so that we can access that easier later. Great, let's switch over to object mode. You'll see all that disappears. Gonna go ahead and switch to render mode so that it can see what I'm doing here. And I'm gonna turn back on my lights and here's kind of the base system that we have. So I'm gonna go ahead here, I'm gonna grab an ambient inclusion node. Now, if you have the free Node Wrangler add-on enabled, you can just hit Control Shift to preview these elements. So if I hit Control Shift here, I can see what my ambient inclusion is going to look like. And I'm gonna go ahead, hit Shift A, and then search for a color ramp to add here. Now, what I can do with this ambient inclusion here is I can drag this down 
and you can see how I'm starting to get a bit more kind of reveal and a nice, clean, smooth fade off there of the kind of black around these edges and other areas. So we're gonna go ahead and mix that with our color attribute. Let's go ahead, click search here, and we're going to look for attribute. And here is our attribute nodes. Go ahead, click Control Shift. We'll see that right now it's black because we have to put in an attribute here. So we're gonna type in grime. And you'll see how that now pops up. Perfect. Now, if we go ahead, we can add a color ramp to this as well, which will give us some kind of control over the intensity that we have there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just leave this here, maybe bump it up just a tiny bit. And we're gonna go ahead and mix these two things. So what we'll do is we'll use a mix RGB node. We'll go ahead, drag that up there. We'll drag this ambient inclusion node into the bottom. We'll turn this factor up to one. And then we're going to click multiply, which will multiply that over our dirty vertex colors. And then we can begin adjusting these until we get something that we're happy with. Now, the dirty vertex colors has a bit more kind of a warbly effect to it, which gives it a bit more realistic of a grunge. So I'm gonna go ahead and reduce that ambient inclusion ever so slightly. Great. Now let's go ahead and take this here, hit Control Shift on our BDS, BSDF node so that we can get back to this normal here. And then what we can do is we can grab this material here. We'll go ahead, we'll duplicate this up on the Y axis. And then we're going to grab a mix shader node and mix these two. And what we'll do is plug this here into the bottom. And we can plug this here over into our factor from these right here. And that will allow us to kind of mix these shaders so that if I grab one of these and kind of move it, you can see how it's starting to get some differentiation. So what we'll do is we'll grab this one and let's say that we want to desaturate this just a tiny bit. And then we're gonna shift the hue over a little bit towards kind of this darker value here. Then we'll lower the value a tiny bit. What that's going to do is start to give us this kind of dirty look. Great, so you can see that now we're starting to get a bit of dirt and grime on the edges there, but this could look a little bit more realistic. Let's also play with the roughness here too. So if we go ahead and we up this roughness value, and then when I start to move around, you can see how that's creating some kind of roughness variation. Perfect. We can also go ahead and take this bump node here and we can just delete it on this version, almost like the wear and tear has kind of worn off kind of the bumpiness of the plastic and smoothed it out wherever that dirt and grime or handling has built up. Perfect, so as I mentioned, um, I have some free sample packs and stuff you can download. So you can actually get in there and choose like a grunge map to download. I'm just gonna kind of drag a random one that I have in. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and grab uh, this grunge map right here. And you can use kind of any of the grunge maps I have. Now, if I hit Control Shift, you'll see that it's just kind of grayed out on our object. And that's because we need to get some mapping coordinates because this was a kind of sculpt remesh. So let's go ahead, hit Control T if you have that Node Wrangler add-on. And we're going to change this to Generated. And you'll see that it becomes smeared across the entire thing. So what we're going to do is take our texture. We're going to change this to box. And what that will do is project it around with a box. And that looks like that is working well right there. I'm happy with that scaling. You can go ahead and change that scaling there if you want. Now let's mix this into our object. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this up here and I do wanna add some roughness variation into our original model. So let's go ahead, Control Shift click here so we can see that. And we will drag this into the roughness up here. And you can see how that's creating a general kind of roughness variation across. If you want, you can add a color ramp node that will uh, give you a bit more control there, but I'm gonna go ahead and kind of leave that general wear and tear. So let's look at how we can further add some grime and dirt to these edges. So I'm gonna go ahead here, click search there. I'm going to look for a mix RGB node. And then what I'm going to do, so I'm gonna go ahead and we're going to put this into one of the color inputs there. And we'll go ahead and put this in one of the color inputs there. And we'll click shift. And you can see how that is beginning to mix 
our two textures together. And we're gonna actually take this up here and use this as a mask to drive that mixture. And you can see now that grunge is appearing everywhere except for our cracks. So what we're going to do is hold control click move that over there and that will swap that. And now you can see that we're getting grunge just around where our areas are. Perfect. Now what we're going to do is drag this back a bit. We're going to add a mix RGB node and then we'll grab this by holding control C over that and we'll just go ahead and paste that in both of those really quickly. So first we're going to use this uh, mask that we just created to kind of drive this color variation here. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna mix that in there. Let's hit control shift here so that we can see what we're doing and how that mask is working. So if I go ahead and take this top color here and decrease the value, you can see that what we're getting is a much more kind of intense grunge effect, perfect. So what we're doing now is we're getting kind of a general dirt and then this kind of extra layer of dirt based off of our grunge material there. Now, if you see these edges and things, that can be from the box projecting. And what you can do is come up here and you can kind of crank up your blend and that will help smooth out those as you see there. Perfect. Great. Now we kind of have this to plug into our grunge. Let's go ahead, look at our mix shader and can see now that we've gotten this kind of dirt buildup on top, which is exactly what we want it to go for. Perfect. Now, lastly, what I would generally do to continue to add more realism to this is I would go ahead and begin kind of painting in some additional grime where I knew that it would kind of appear as well. For example, you're going to have some grime up here on the top where you're grabbing it constantly and probably some more grime buildup down here where it's kind of got these darker, deeper crevices. Now, lastly, if you wanted to go ahead and do a sticker like me, what you could do is get rid of this rotation, tab into edit mode here, and then you could create a second UV map here. And I called this one sticker. And you press U and project from view in the front view there. And then if I tab over here in the UV editor, you can see that now we have this front view and you can just kind of load in your sticker and line up those lines there. And then when you plug that into your texture up here, you can use a UV map node and make sure that you have the collect UV map selected for your image texture. Then you can just plug this into the coordinates of whatever your sticker image texture is. And with that, that's kind of one way I go about trying to create more believable textures in Blender. Let me know what you think in the comments below. As usual, thank you for watching and tag me in your creations at Southern Shoddy on Instagram and Twitter so that I can see what you've made. If you're interested in supporting the channel or getting some project files, I do have a Patreon and products that I sell. Links in the description below.